on the Murphy Hotline from the District 4. I, well, I don't know if you're in town or not. I'm assuming you get back to Alabama as soon as possible when you get out. Congressman Adderholt, good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, Matt, I am actually in uh, Mar- uh, right going to Gadsden this morning. I'm uh, between Huntsville and Gadsden, so I'm right here between uh, the Gunnersville and Huntsville right now. Nice to get back to God's country after spending all that time in Washington, D.C., Oh, it's great. It's good to see everybody, and, uh, you know, it's the best part of seeing a lot of folks that I hadn't seen in a while and catching up, and uh, so um, I've got a pretty full day today. I've got to be able to jo- get some job corps uh, this morning, and then uh, I'll be speaking to the Kiwanis Club there in Gadsden at noon, and uh, then I've got meetings with uh, constituents in office this afternoon in my office in Gadsden. Well, so, Congressman, uh, um, a lot of folks are finding out more and more about Obamacare, as we're calling it on this program, and I'm sure you've heard the phrase before. Um, I think this was the the plan of attack all along on the part of the Democrats, as to get it through quick enough where folks cannot get a sense of what exactly this program would do. I'm sure that you have a sense of it, as do your constituents. So I guess I'm wondering, now that we've heard from the Democrat National Committee that we have a lot of white right-wing extremists coming to town hall meetings, speaking against Obamacare. That's their phraseology, not mine. Uh, I'm wondering if you've met any of these folks and what your constituents have to say about this health care proposal. Well, I have uh, my constituency all along has been the phone calls that we've received and the interactions that I've had have been overwhelmingly uh, against the health care plan. So, you know, I think a lot of these people that uh, are... Uh, it's a lot of members of Congress that are encountering the ones that maybe have not heard the other side. But from the very beginning, we've heard uh, our, it's been almost overwhelming from the people of the 4th District that have called into our office saying that uh, they're very much against uh, uh, Obamacare or this uh, nationalized health care that uh, has been proposed. So it's, uh, you know, I, I don't really meet many people at all who are supported. The only people that I meet that are in support of it is in Washington. Um, well, and, and that's the thing that has struck me about this, and, and it seems that the mainstream media, at least parts of the mainstream media, they will be carrying the water for the Democrats on this, and specifically President Obama. We keep hearing from him, and we keep hearing from Nancy Pelosi, that there is a clarion call across the USA to get universal health care in this country. And, Congressman, from my talks with our listening audience in my experience day to day, I just don't see that. Would you agree? I totally agree. Now, that's not to say there may be some pockets in some districts across the country that that there are a, a lot of support for it, but I will say the overwhelming majority of the United States has great concerns about it, and certainly they have great concerns about trying to move very quickly on a bill and trying to get it, get it through real fast. I want to read you, um, in anticipation of your coming on the program with us, Congressman, we obviously told folks that you would be on this morning, and I received an email a little while ago. I just want to read the email to you as I received it and get your response on it. Okay. Um, Robert Adderholt voted for the Cash for Clunkers bill last Friday at 5 p.m., which is to add $2 billion to the already ill-run and ill-conceived plan, as well as five other Alabama representatives. Joe Bonner was the only one who voted against it. Tell Congressman Adderold he's lost all credibility and will be voted out in the next election. How do you respond to that? Well, the cash for clunkers was a. Uh, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm almost uh, this. This has been the tw- twice I voted on it. When the original vote came before Congress about a month ago to authorize the original bill, I actually voted against it. Uh, I didn't. Uh, it didn't strike me as a good idea at the time, uh, especially concerning everything that was uh, happening with. Uh, all the spending and just just the basic philosophy of the of a cash for clunkers type legislation. Of course, the goal of the legislation, as you know, is trying to get uh, a lot of the cars that were burning up a lot of the. Uh, I mean, they were getting poor gas mileage off the roads, and to hope people would buy buy uh, better uh, newer cars that would have better gas mileage. Um, and uh, you know, of course, as you know, the, the program was a great success. Uh, people were going out uh, by the thousands and purchasing the uh, new cars and uh, using this uh, $4,500 rebate that they were eligible for. And uh, so I voted last week then to reauthorize the program, even though, I, like I said, I had, I had concerns about it from the very beginning. Uh, one thing that I, that I was told, and I, I've, I've got to verify this with my, uh, with my office, but 
that this money uh, was supposed to have been carved out of the uh, money that had already been set, set aside for the stimulus package. And um, I was under the impression when I cast my vote that, that wa- it was not new money that was being spent, but money that was already being uh, set aside for the stimulus program. And, um, you know, the, the good thing about the, this particular program was it was giving people incentives to uh, trade in cars that got get bad gas mileage for cars that will get better gas mileage. So I like it when the government gives incentives to people as opposed to mandating, and that was the thing that I thought was a positive aspect of the bill. Well, these aren't, uh, as I understand it, these aren't necessarily incentives to the people, right? The rebate's back to the dealership. But the people will actually get the, will get. I mean, they receive. get the benefit of the savings on on the exactly. cost of the automobile, but uh, they, they that that would go directly to the dealership. They just cut it off the bottom line. It gives right. the it dealership was, the ability to sell the car for forty five hundred dollars cheaper. Exactly, and uh, like I said, you know, I, I don't like it any time when the government get involved in mandating that you have to have a car that gets a certain gas mileage. You know, I, that's why I have real problems with the cafe standards. Uh, but, uh, you know, this I saw this as different in being that it was a incentive for people who wanted to get rid of their, their old cars who did, that did not get good gas mileage and try to invest in some uh, cars that got better gas mileage. Also, too, you know, we have a lot. We manufacture a lot of cars in the state of Alabama. And uh, so, uh, therefore, I, uh, you know, think it's important that, uh, you know, we, uh, there's a lot of people who sell cars across the district that I represent, and I know across the state of Alabama. And so uh, hopefully this will help their bottom line as well. Congressman, you've been very clear, and by the way, Congressman Robert Adderhold is our guest this morning for the next few minutes. You've been very clear in your opposition to a, a single-payer system in terms of government health care, and, and President Obama has seemingly agreed with you on that point repeating over and over again to everyone that will listen that this is not a single-payer system, that this is a, a public option uh, with the ability for individuals to keep their health care that they currently have if they like it. We've now, uh, Drudge Report, amongst other organizations, have uncovered a video from 2003 in which Obama now says that he is in favor of a single-payer system, and that's what he wants to see, but it's not going to happen overnight. It takes retaking the White House, and he goes through a litany of of uh, litmus test that you will have to go through before you will see a single payer system in America. So my question, and and I just want to know if I'm right in in asking this question, Congressman, is uh, which is it, Mr. President? You were for a single payer system then. You've either changed your mind, or is it the case, Congressman? Do you believe that the Democrats in in Congress, as well as the Democrats in the White House, are intentionally being somewhat disingenuous when they claim they don't want a single payer system? when that is what they truly want? Well, I think there's many in the Democrat conference. Uh, like, I don't know if you you saw the clip from Barney Frank. He was pretty much asked the same question, and he uh, said that the country wasn't ready to go to a single-payer system right now, but uh, therefore that was what he would like to see. So there are a lot of members of Congress that I think would like to see a, uh, a single-payer system and see that that would be the route to take. I think reality sets in and they know that this cannot be something that can be set into motion overnight. It will have to, would have to be a gradual thing. But I think, by and large, I'm sure there's some uh, conservative Democrats that have concerns about the program, but I think the bottom line is that most uh, Democrats and uh, across the country would ultimately like to see a single-payer system. Um, Congressman, we certainly appreciate you being on the program with us. Tell us a little bit about your... Um... I won't call it a vacation. It's a working vacation, if anything. Uh, what you plan to do in and around the state of Alabama before you have to head back to Capitol Hill next month? Well, uh, as I say today, I'm actually speaking to the uh, Kiwanis Club in uh, Gadsden, Alabama today, uh, uh, speaking to people there. And, of course, I anticipate the health care issue to be one of the front and center topics that will be what will come up. I actually plan to discuss it quite a bit. Uh, then, of course, in my office uh, this afternoon, I have an office in Gadsden, and uh, where uh, I, uh, uh, you know, I meet with constituents there. So, people who have called in and who have uh, uh, made uh, appointment to come by, will be uh, talking with them uh, this afternoon. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow, I will be uh, uh, visiting with uh, a group over in Marshall County, 
and uh, and then Friday I will be uh, over in Coleman with uh, meeting with constituents uh, in my office. I also have an office in Coleman. So, uh, you know, it's going to be basically trying to do some things that when I'm in Washington I'm not able to do and to try to catch up on some. Of course, the next week I'll be speaking at, uh, uh, I believe it's the Civitan Club up in Franklin County up in Russellville uh, on, on Tuesday of next week. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty full schedule. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, this weekend, of course, trying to get down to Pickens County, which is one of the counties on the southern part of my district, and uh, spend some time, of course, with my family as well. Well, Congressman, be be careful, as the Democratic National Convention characterizes them, be careful for those right-wing extremists in your district.